Jill Mills. Um, what a privilege and an honor to spend a day talking about her poetry. It's really quite wonderful. Uh, I hope this poem stands on its own, but I would like to give you a few kind of contextual comments about it. It's part of a, a sequence of poems that I'm writing about raising my children. And I live next to Old Salem. And you can immediately tell from my accent that I'm not from around here. But my children are born and bred Southerners. And we're watching football once, and uh, there's a running play. And my son looks at it and goes, Daddy, that's just a big old mess. <laughs> and I kind of look over and go, yeah. <laughs> so and if you look at me, I am, you would assume that I'm white. But you look at my children, and they are obviously African. So I'm a white parent raising black children in the South, which has a, a number of interesting moments, like uh, when I hear my daughter working with her new karaoke machine and, and starting to figure out the song Dixie, which immediately makes me want to run to the circuit breaker and say, let's stop for a minute, let's think about what's going on here. So one of the things about Old Salem is, if you look at some of the documents, there's this clear pushing away of blackness that happens. That when the Moravians arrive, they'll consider uh, having somebody black become a brethren and be buried in God's acre. And then they start to change their view and they decide to accept slavery. And it's a conscious decision. And there is this pushing away of not having blacks in God's acre and having an African American cemetery. Then at some point that cemetery is destroyed. And the African American church itself is pushed off of the grounds to uh, later kind of be reconstructed. So this poem is called Simple Architecture. I toured the African-American church with my son, who would rather be outside collecting rocks. The guide points out the architecture is simple, to keep people's mind on God. And I remember reading how Moravian hymns were composed so everyone could sing them. And I think of how I'm searching for the right forms for these poems, ones that are as simple and solid as wooden bowls. Then my son tugs at my hand and asks, Daddy, do you like church? I try not to lie to my children. So I say, no, not really. He says, good, because he thinks this will mean we'll be done soon. <laughs> the guide explains changes to the building and mentions the beautification project that landscaped over the churchyard graves, as if it was just a misguided attempt to make the town a little more picturesque. We go back outside, and I look at the wall listing 181 names that have been separated from the bodies. As my son goes back to gathering stones, he will give these to his mother, not thinking to tell her about the church or the cemetery. He'll say, I pet a black cat, and we had donuts. <laughs> Later he'll cry when he thinks the rocks have been lost. His mother will assure him they're in a beautiful bowl on her desk, and I'll debate whether to tell her how he found them on the grave sites of children, ones whose names have been lost. So each marker now says simply, child. And we only know this because of the size of the bones. I will debate whether to write any of this, afraid of what I'm bulldozing over, afraid of what I'm beautifying, afraid I don't know what is ours and should remain unspoken, and what is ours and must be said. Thank you.